Hello, this is Christian Idealism, and today we are going to be looking at the distinction between consciousness proper and self-reflexive consciousness. This is, of course, brought to you by Cal Allender. So first, why do I make this distinction? Well, first off, within the neuroscientific literature, there is a growing view that we can explain consciousness under the physicalist ontology by explaining the development of someone's knowledge of consciousness throughout their life. Infants, for example, don't have a sense of the self yet, since the language of mental categories is not yet known. And so it's argued that language is what gives us the sense of mental categories, rather than these categories being ontological to a reality. And so the study of the Neural Correlates of Consciousness, or NCC, consists of correlating objective measurements with introspective thought. Some use this to argue that the knowledge of someone is the same as their consciousness, and since knowledge builds over time, then consciousness builds over time, it is therefore not fundamental. We will review this objection in the summary. So now let's go to consciousness proper. So consciousness proper under idealism is fundamental and is not the byproduct of anything external to it. It is the sole ontological primitive of reality. And so consciousness proper is defined as mental activity is conscious if there is something it is feels like to have such mental activity in and of itself. Or, if one wants to avoid using the word feel in this definition, philosophers of mind have typically defined consciousness as mental activity is conscious if and only if there is something, anything, it is like to have such mental activity in and of itself. And so, you only consider yourself conscious right now because there is something it is like to be you, at least from your subjective self. Otherwise, you would be unconscious. This consciousness does not require any knowledge for language or a sense of the self or a sense of self-reflexive consciousness. So we will address the unconscious aspect in a moment, and we will dive a little bit deeper in a moment. So now, what about self-reflexive consciousness? Well, self-reflexive consciousness is the conscious knowledge of the experience, which comes in addition to the experience itself. And so our last definition gave the experience itself, whereas this definition gives the knowledge, which comes in addition to the last definition that we gave. In other words, self-reflection is the consciousness that we have knowledge of and is the source of our language. And so a subject's consciousness and unconsciousness are really one and the same. And so first, there is an associative link between the ego and the experience of a metaconsciousness or self-reflexive consciousness. And this is the re-representation of the experience. Therefore, while subjects can report a metaconsciousness process or a self-reflexive consciousness or introspection as some people call it, they fundamentally cannot distinguish between truly unconscious processes and conscious processes that are not metaconscious or not self-reflexive. And so I wanna I'm gonna argue here that dreams are largely non-self-reflexive. So mental activity does not need to be re-represented in order to be experienced. During ordinary dreams, we can simply experience without consciously knowing that we experience. To make it more direct, let's take an example of you breathing at this very moment. The sensation of air throwing, going through your nostrils and going through your lungs are all being experienced without your knowledge of it. It is only when I directed your attention to that thing that you became self-reflexively aware of that thing. And so awareness is self-reflexive consciousness, since it is when one gains the knowledge of these experiences. But obviously being aware of something doesn't mean one has to just, that That doesn't mean that they just became conscious of that thing. This is why there is a distinction between awareness and consciousness, since we are always conscious, but we are not always aware. And so awareness is simply the extra quality of knowing sensations, but it is obviously not all of consciousness itself. And so I'm going to make another distinction between the conscious versus the unconscious. So under idealism, nothing in reality is truly unconscious. What we call the unconscious in psychology, therefore, would be the consciousness that would be, again, the consciousness outside the field of self-reflection. And so one objection would be that this distinction between consciousness or consciousness proper and, and meta-consciousness or self-reflexive consciousness is merely just plain semantics. Well, however, by completing consciousness proper with self-reflexive consciousness, then we also indirectly equate non-self-reflexive consciousness with unconsciousness. So then the implication of this would be that dreams, which 
largely lack self-reflection or, and they also lack awareness, are not experienced. And we obviously know that to be the case. We dream all the time, every night, we're just not always aware of our dreams. And so given that this cannot be just semantics, the implication is that self-reflexive consciousness or awareness is in fact a byproduct of the brain and how the brain works. However, consciousness proper is not a byproduct of anything, but is rather the ontological primitive of reality. And so under the idealist view of reality, all is mental and all mental processes are conscious, but there is also awareness that builds over time in which conscious agents may gain the knowledge of their own experiences. But obviously given, even without this knowledge, they would still have experiences they would just the lack knowledge of those experiences. And so summary so far. I'm gonna summarize just a few important points here. So first is the actual argument that we gave in the first slide, which was within neuroscience, the study of neural of consciousness has been used to try to explain consciousness without the need for consciousness to be fundamental. This has been done by explaining how knowledge is gained over time through language and it's argued that this is the source of rental categories, as well as the objection that psychology gives us good reason to think that there is something beyond the ontology of consciousness because there are unconscious aspects to our mind. This is the primary argument against idealism. So now we're going to just summarize the first definition, which is conscious proper. So conscious proper is defined as mental activity is conscious if and only if there's something, anything, it is like to have such mental activities in and of itself. It has nothing to do with knowledge, just experience itself. However, the second definition would be self-reflexive consciousness or awareness is the conscious knowledge of the experience, which comes in addition to the experience itself. And so, as you can see here, this is in a, the self-reflexive consciousness is in addition to the consciousness proper. And you could, I guess you could also argue that the self-reflexive consciousness is a byproduct of consciousness proper, but consciousness proper and self-reflexive consciousness are obviously not the same thing. And so now we're going to the fourth point, which is that during ordinary dreams, we can simply experience without consciously knowing that we experience. The same is true for breathing, as well as many other conscious activities that we lack awareness of. But obviously we don't lack the experience of breathing just because we lack the awareness of breathing. And so thus, given these reasons, the argument that there is an ontology beyond consciousness because there is an unconscious aspect to our mind is unwarranted due to there being a false conflation between consciousness proper and self-reflexive consciousness. What we call the unconscious in psychology therefore would still be conscious, but it would be the consciousness that is outside the field of self-reflection or outside our awareness and so that is why i make that distinction and so that will be my video thank you guys for watching and have a nice day